nationwide and close to home for everything you need. About the House, sponsored by Home Value. It seems to be progressing, but I can't see much difference. Will I do the same type of job again? No. It was perfectly livable in when we bought it, and uh, <laughs> now it's a rake. Large houses can become a burden in later life, and so Tony and Joan Hennessy are downsizing from their home in Renala to a smaller house in Rat Mines, as they want to stay near to Dublin city centre. Tony and Joan are lucky to have a summer home in Wexford and are living there until the new house is ready. Their Renala home needs modernising to suit their future needs. And fortunately, their son Derek is an architect who is able to manage the whole project for them. They've come to Dublin to check on the progress of the house, so I'm meeting up with them to find out more. Joan, Tony, you had a lovely house in Leeson Park. Why did you decide to sell it? We had too, too many rooms, and just the two of us. There were 11 rooms, and it was far too big. If you forgot your glasses in the morning, and there were 48 steps back up to the bedroom to get them. We decided that it would be too much to handle. So why did you decide to live here? Well, we're, we're urban animals. We wanted to be central. Uh, we looked, where could we get? And in Randler, all the streets of Randler, they nearly all have on-street parking only, you know? And we, we didn't want that, so we found this small house in Rathmines. And uh, I've always liked Rathmines since I was a student in UCD. And there are a lot of uh, exciting things to do uh, with the local VEC and the new swimming pool going up and a new film centre. Currently, the house is a terraced two up, two down, with a car garage at the rear. It has a long garden in which they plan to build an extension to accommodate more accessible ground floor space. Building standards in the 1930s were nothing like today's. Houses of that period had no insulation. This is a good opportunity for Tony and Joan to bring their house up to a better than modern building standards and take advantage of new materials available. However, finding the builders wasn't easy. We went out to tender to six builders. We got a quote from one and no replies from the other five. Supposedly the building industry is in recession, but there was no evidence of it. What did you decide to do then, Tony? Well, we went direct labour. Once you go direct labour, you really are now depending very much on your architect, and you're very much depending on your foreman on site, mm. and that you've got your insurances in place. The main risk of direct labour is that you pay the tradesman by the day, as opposed to a fixed quote. Any delays or setbacks can mean an increase in costs. There is no main contractor accountable if you discover any defects at a later stage, and as the owner, you're legally responsible and must have public and employer's insurance. Who's doing it then, if you've got direct labour? We have an Australian guy called Mike, we have an Irish guy called Anthony, and four Polish guys. And you've briefed your architect now on what you want, have you? Well, happily enough, our son is the architect. <laughs> to be honest, we said, look, we don't want to know. Do whatever you feel. You know, he's carte blanche within right. reason. Literally, you're giving it to him. Yes. Decide what you want to do. Do you expect now to walk into a perfectly done house now when it's all finished? I would hope to, <laughs> yes. Tony and Joan are putting a lot of faith in their son Derek. So let's hope he can deliver. To oversee the job, Derek has employed a foreman, although he's not your typical builder. I'm a landscaper by trade. So the thing is that this is the first time I've undertaken a renovation. I, I was trying to kind of walk away from it, but uh, the guys that I have have all got building experience. They wanted to undertake the job because this is what they do back home in Poland. It can be a big risk to use an unconventional workforce. Hopefully, Derek and Mike will not regret taking on the job. 
Despite the fact Derek has carte blanche, Tony and Joan are curious to see the design. OK, I'll just take off the roof and the first floor to show you what the downstairs is going to be like. We're going to redo the sliding doors to the living room because they're not, they don't work, function very well at the moment. Mm. We're going to push, push the wall back at, at the stairs to create a slightly larger entrance hall. And we'll have a downstairs toilet and hot press room. And then over here will be the extension. Mm. There'll be a, a flat roof extension, which uh, will, will resemble something like that. We'll then put on the, the first floor, pretty much the same as before. We'll have the front bedroom, the back bedroom. Uh, this can be your office here. I'm looking to knock down all that partition and create one larger bathroom area. And that, that's really it. What do, what do you think about the ideas? Oh, I like it, yeah. Yeah, grand. He knows what we want. And uh, also it saves, saves us having to make make decisions. That it would be fresh and new and comfortable. And that's what I'm looking forward to. In order to build the extension, Derek has the risky task of taking out the back wall. Props here. Better. So Derek, you're opening up all of this back wall here and you're having to now support all that superstructure of blockwork above. We're going to put in a, uh, it's like a pi steel picture frame. Once the lower wall is taken out um, quick enough, we're going to put in uh, the steel structure to resolve the weight of that wall coming down. You're going to have a very tricky job here ahead of you. You're taking away the centre pier here. You're going to have to support all of that blockwork overhead and all of the roof structure. It concerns me and I'd be glad when it's in. I don't want to have any delays, unnecessary delays. Take it out, put in the steel, let, put the wall back on top of it and get on with the rest of the build. Right. If it goes wrong, the whole house could fall down. It's life-threatening to the workers on site and the neighbours. Therefore, the whole project is supervised by a structural engineer. Taking out the back wall was a big worry for him. He's having sleepless nights about it. He's more concerned because it's for us, and he's put such a lot of work into it. He worries too much about it, I think. I just feel a sense of nervousness, seeing it in such a state. Everything is like a shell. Worried about the back wall, whether or not it would develop cracks or worse still, fall down. To ensure the rest of the house doesn't collapse during the removal, they prop the first floor. It must be done slowly and with care, so the remaining structure isn't weakened. There's still a fair amount to be done. The plastering on the outside, the insulation of the floorboards have got to go in, of course the kitchen and uh, the bathroom have got to go in. This is going to be your new home. We didn't expect all this. It was perfectly livable in when we bought it. And uh, <laughs> now it's a rake. Will Derek be able to salvage it? I'll be back later in the programme to find out. Test <laughs> Test. Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas. You can't see it. You can't smell it. It diffuses from the soil into the air. But in a confined space, such as within a building, it can accumulate and it can reach dangerously high concentrations. Long-term exposure to high levels of radon gives rise to lung cancer. Lung cancer is the leading type of cancer causing death in Ireland and smoking is the most significant risk factor for lung cancer. However, the second most important risk factor is radon. Anne O'Sullivan lost her husband, Ted, to lung cancer five years ago. They lived with their two dogs in a bungalow in Kilmacow, County Kilkenny. When he retired, we decided to move back over here. And his parents lived in the bungalow, which was next door. Right, yeah. OK. But there was so much land with the property that we decided to cut it in half and have a new bungalow built. And how many years ago did you build the house? 16 years. Right, and you're living here ever since? Yes. Yeah. Ted was a smoker and fairly advanced in years, so it wasn't out of the question that he could develop lung cancer. But soon after he passed away, Anne experienced another unexpected loss. A few weeks after Ted died, one of the dogs was taken ill and I took it to the veterinary hospital at New Ross. And 
the dog was diagnosed with cancer. A couple of months after that, my other dog, which was only five years old, she was diagnosed with cancer as well. The vet there uh, recommended that I get in touch with the radon people because I could possibly have radon gas in the house. Well, I became suspicious when Ted had died in the October. Sally, uh, the collie, had died uh, in the December and then Cindy was put to sleep in the June. I mean, that's way, you know, too much coincidence for my liking. At the time, we were building a house ourselves and I had done all my background research and knew about radon. Radon is classified by the World Health Organization as a Group 1 cancer-causing agent in the same group as tobacco smoke and asbestos. Smokers are also at greater risk than non-smokers. It's estimated that they're actually 25 times more at risk than non-smokers. Acting on our vet's advice, Anne contacted the Radiological Protection Institute of Ireland who recommended that her house be tested by a specialist. Well, a radon test is quite simple. You, you take a, a minimum period of three months, you put two testers in, and you take the average of those two testers, and then you apply an adjustment factor to account for the variations in the seasons. Radon detectors record the level of radon in a measurement known as becquerels. 200 becquerels per cubic metre is considered the safe limit. Detectors were placed in two rooms in Anne's house, which found an overall average reading of around 500 becquerels. Eugene, this was Ted and Anne's bedroom at the time five years ago. How did you find it? Well, the first thing we noticed is that it has a high radon level of 519 becquerels, which is, it is, it is quite high. And in this case here, there's an air vent here, but this room is backing onto a garage, which was built after the air vent was put in. So this vent wasn't working? So it's, it's not working. So we put another air vent in here to bring fresh air in. And by bringing fresh air in, you do two things. You reduce the suction in the house, which draws radon into the room, and you also dilute whatever quantities of radon are in there. Then we check the floor. So in this particular case, we found in the wardrobe a hole about a foot in diameter. So the radon was able to come up through there. Correct. Yeah. What draws it up into the room? It's, it's uh, Radon is drawn into a building by a suction effect, which is caused by the combination of wind and central heating and by the draw on your fireplace. So what was your remedy for the house then, generally? Well, in this particular house, it's a reasonably straightforward house. It's uh, a bungalow of about uh, 1,200 square feet. So what we did here was we put in an activated radon sump, which draws the radon out from underneath the ground. We create a void underneath the floor and we put a pipe into that void and we attach a fan to it. And that fan is left on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that acts like a vacuum cleaner and causes a vacuum underneath the floor, which counters the natural suction effect of the building. So instead of radon being drawn out this way, we get air being drawn this down way. Into the down into the from the house. Floor. Correct. What were the readings afterwards then? Did you do another test? We would always do a test. So this house was measured for another three months and the readings came down to an average of 25 becquerels. So Anne, now that you've done the work on the house and you've brought down the radon levels, how do you feel safe in the house now? I do, definitely, definitely. And also I've got two more dogs. And you feel they're safe I now? I feel the they're safe now, yes, yeah. Because I wouldn't want anything happening to them either. A national radon survey carried out in the 1990s found that there are higher concentrations of the radioactive gas in certain areas of the country. A map on the RPII website shows where it's most prevalent. It should be noted that there can be high radon in any part of the country. Newly built homes are also at risk. This is a radon sump which goes into every new built house in Ireland. And the purpose of this here, it's a standby sump which is used in the event of the house uh, being tested for radon. It's, it, it does nothing to reduce radon levels until such point as a fan is attached to it. What else do you need to do? In addition to this, you need a radon barrier. But this sheet goes beneath the concrete and it provides a gas type barrier, in theory. It's a, a good form of defence against radon. It's not completely foolproof. So it's very important that houses, even with radon barriers, get tested. So really, with all of our new houses, yeah. we really should get a test done before people actually... Absolutely. You know, at the, as soon as you occupy the house, for Absolutely. the first three months. Every house should be tested. The good news is that though radon is a health risk, it's an easily reducible health risk. And if you do find out that you have a problem with radon, it's relatively inexpensive to have it remedied. And once uh, the problem is solved, it's solved for good. If you're worried about radon in your home, why not have it tested? 
The test costs about 56 euro for two detectors and the laboratory results. The cost of remedy for this house was 1500 euro. This can vary depending on severity from 200 to 2000 euro, but this is money well spent. In addition to the new energy labelling at the sale of all houses, a compulsory radon test could be introduced. If levels are found to be above the safe limits, the problem could be remedied before causing damage to health. Nationwide and close to home, for everything you need. About the House, sponsored by Home Value. Nationwide and close to home, for everything you need. About the House, sponsored by Home Value. It's been eight weeks since work started on Tony and Joan Hennessy's house near Dublin city centre. Their son Derek, an architect, is in charge of the entire operation and has designed an extension. It seems to be progressing, but I can't see much difference. Renovation work can be slow, especially with unexpected problems. The next door wall was only supported by a line of bricks and a little bit of concrete and so it had no real footing there. So as soon as we saw that, we had to underpin that uh, and give that support. That was something that we weren't expecting when we first started the project. Now it's been underpinned, uh, they've got uh, support, uh, and everything seems to be okay. Like many old houses, this terraced house is in need of upgrading. The first and easiest thing to do is to tackle the attic, where there's a lot of heat loss. And if you put in about 16 inches of insulation, about 400 millimetres, that will dramatically bring down the heat loss of that roof space. And it's got a very good return on investment, about three years payback. That is better than the SSIA, which has a five-year return on investment. If you use Rockwell Quilt, about 400 millimetres of insulation is needed. Derek is using a high-performance insulation. 100 millimetres is fitted tight between the joists of the attic floor and a further 150 millimetres is added above, then plywood or OSB decking as an attic floor. The high-performance insulation is more expensive. However, it takes up less space and it comes with the plasterboard laminate attached. To prevent heat loss, it's vital that there are no gaps and it's crucial that the insulation is fire retardant. Another issue that needs to be taken into account with insulation is the cold bridging around the window reveals because when the window, the new window gets fitted, it's going to go probably into this area here, leaving this space of uninsulated brickwork or blockwork. Now that area means you've got a lot of heat loss going out through there also, right around the whole window. So what you need to do is make sure that you insulate this with this thinner insulation and then it's plasterboarded over. Double glazing optimizes solar energy in south facing windows. For all other orientations, it's best to use high performance triple glazing. Whilst Tony and Joan are relaxing in Wexford, they're oblivious to any problems back in Dublin. Work in the house has been held up by the rain. Also, Anthony, who's an experienced builder, is on holidays for three weeks, leaving Mike, the landscape gardener, in charge of site supervision. That slowed things down because I haven't got the experience and the, and the knowledge that probably required to, to take on that job. While Anthony was away, the rear extension walls, when they went up, I didn't notice that the insulation had not been uh, adjoined to the inner wall. Uh, when Derek came to check it, he noticed it straight away and we had to redo certain things uh, to, uh, to make sure that the insulation was in against the wall. That kind of held us up. I have to uh, put my hand up and take responsibility for that. Between Derek and Anthony, uh, small mistakes were picked up and fixed up. And so therefore, I can walk away knowing that the job had been done properly. Would I do the same type of job again? No. Uh, I'd say uh, you're better off leaving the builders to do the work and the landscapers to do their work because the thing is that um, uh, you can get yourself in a fair bit of trouble, especially if you're doing something that you're not familiar with. Fair play to Mike for his honesty. 
Fortunately, with his team of qualified tradesmen, he's able to get the project back on track. I'm meeting up with Tony and Joan so they can see what progress has been made. So how do you feel about the way it's shaping up now, Joan? Oh, I'm delighted mm. to see the plaster on the walls. Absolutely. So this is now the kitchen area down here, is it? What's the layout going to be here? Well, it's a, a lovely big kitchen for starters, which I'm delighted with. And I have the hob and oven and microwave here and an island unit here. Right in the centre? Here. Right in the centre. Yeah. Um, which I've never had before. Yes. And that links you to this side of the room to too, doesn't it? Room. Yeah. And what's inside here? Utility room with a shower so that, you know, later on in our lives we can perhaps, you know, live down could here adapt. if necessary. Right. We could adapt. So you're trying to make provision that if you ever needed to adapt to a ground floor living, you could do so. That's yes. a good idea. Have you thought about colour schemes and finishes or anything like that yet? Not yet. Putting in We're walnut floors. Walnut, walnut floors. Walnut floor. That's yes. going to be beautiful. Be lovely, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Be yeah, absolutely. The one thing to watch with darker colour floors is that they absorb an awful lot of daylight. So even though you could have a beautiful floor, mm. you do need a lot of daylight to, if you like, compensate for the amount of light absorption from a By dark floor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just to bear that in mind mm. too, you know. Mm. I think walnut is a beautiful floor though. I think this is going to be a big change because you'll probably find this house is going to be so comfortable in energy terms, mm. you know, and healthy too with good fresh air conditions. Yeah. It's great that Tony and Joan can finally visualise their new home, but there's still a long way to go. So far, it's taken eight weeks to strip out, demolish the back wall, add insulation and new windows, and begin building an extension. This may seem like a long time, but renovating old houses can unearth many hidden challenges. Although the project is finally well on its way, not everybody looks pleased. Are you enjoying this sort of work? No, not really. It's uh, been quite stressful and um, I've had a lot of worry, probably more worry than I would do on a much larger scheme. A lot of your practice is to do with new build, isn't it though? That's right, mostly new, new build housing schemes or say office, office buildings in the past in my career. So getting this involved with a domestic renovation, it's a little bit more than I've, a little bit different to what I've done before. And doing it for your parents too, that must have another dimension to it also. Yeah, it, it does. Um, thankfully, they've been very understanding and um, the, the, the tolerant of me. Next time on About the House, I'm back in Mullingar to see how Patrick and Neve Daly are getting on with their experimental home. Also, I'm in North Wales to see how traditional Bangor Blue slates are sourced and made. For more information on this programme, visit the RTE website. Nationwide and close to home, for everything you need. About the House, sponsored by Home Value.